We're back with uh, weapon select, and this this time we're doing splatling, cause we're doing we're doing spinny gun. And uh, I brought along some spinny gunners who are who are gonna tell me everything I'm doing wrong, cause uh, this is this is definitely not my weapon class. Uh, welcome, Aplo and Devi. Uh, are you sure I'm here? That sounded like a question. <laughs> I was just gonna. I was gonna continue on to the next person. So you use rising inflection to set it up, and then you falling inflection to knock it down. You know. Okay. 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 I get you. I get you. Usually start off by um, talking about the weapon class in the general case, and then we move on from there to talking about the individual variants. Um, I think that you know maybe maybe you guys feel differently about this, but my take is that I, I think the most kind of standard splatling, the one that's kind of the default, is the heavy splatling. Um, that it's like got. A little bit of everything that the other splatlings do, um, and that it's it functions the most like you would expect a splatling to play. Um, so I think we'll start there. But first, splatlings as a whole. Uh, splatlings are a, a funky weapon uh, because uh, where is my aim reticle? Oh, there it is. Um, also, because when you press ZR. Uh, it doesn't always shoot a bunch. Uh, if you press and hold ZR, it's like, wait, what, where, where, where are my shots? Where am I? Or, what's going on? Uh, because you have to charge before you can fire, similar to a charger. But it doesn't have it in the name, so you're not ready for it. <gasps> Gasp. Um, when you fire, it goes really, really fast and goes really, really far. But since we've got this big gap in between when we press the ZR button and when we can actually release shots, um, it's not like uh, if you were to give that sort of fire capability to a shooter, in which case it would be broken as all heck. Um, splatlings are a little bit slower to move around. They require careful positional play so that you don't have that period of vulnerability during a time when someone is able to actually shoot at you. Um, and as such, uh, there aren't really very many frontline uh, splatlings. You, the closest you get is like a midline splatling generally, and usually those are like going to play off somebody else starting the fight and then finishing them for the most part. Because um, it's really hard to push in and actually get on top of an opponent if the way that you have to fight is by like peeking out from behind a wall and then jumping back behind the wall again. Um, that's, that's not really the, the short range shooter way. That's not really what, what you're going to be looking at with something like, with, with like a sploosh. Like you can't play that way with a splatling because you've always got this charge time to account for. Um, so a couple of things, um, the box around your reticle is showing, you know, where those shots could potentially go. There is aim RNG and as such, um, Sometimes, you know, the shots aren't going to go exactly where you want them to. Um, depends on the weapon, of course, how much they have. Um, most splatlings, if you drop down into your ink, you lose your charge immediately. Uh, the exception being the Nautilus, where you can actually charge hold. And that's one thing that makes that weapon a little bit more capable of frontlining. Run speed? Run speed? Run speed. Run speed? <laughs> Run speed? With the splatlings, you're not going to want to be spending a lot of time swimming, because swimming cancels your charge unless you are a Nautilus. And so, in order to, to stay mobile as much as you can, a Splatling will run a lot of run speed. Um, usually something like two mains. And so you can see that's why I have been running this much of it on my gear. Uh, don't worry, I'll just edit this into the front of the video. It'll be fine. Uh, and you can see how much charge you have, because as you start charging up, there's this circle that fills up over time. And once that circle goes down to uh, empty, that's when you're going to run out of shots to fire. So you can be keeping track of exactly when the shots are going to run out, and exactly how many shots you're going to have in the first place, 
just by looking at how much that circle has filled up. If I'm correct, uh, especially with, like, the early charge, like, before you get full charge, you have less range. Here's, like, quarter charge. Here's about half charge. Okay, so it does actually increase over time. Here's, like, three quarters charge. Yeah, and then with and then full, here's... it'll hit next. I'm not sure if it's, like, as soon as you hit the second ring, or... It yeah, because like it's like, this ring. This was like one quarter, mm -hmm. this was like one half, so it's like scaling up over time, and I'm not sure exactly at what point it gets to full. Because so like, here's max range. And then... Yeah, once you hear that like, blinking sound, I think, is when you get f max range. Mm -hmm. The first. Yeah. So, once you have your full first circle. Because then the first circle is slower, and then the second circle is really fast. So, I think the second circle, you're just getting more shots. So, with just, like, a little bit of charge, you're only going to hit so far away from you. You're not going to be able to just use that to hit max range shots. Um, but it is still, you know, your fastest kill time if you need that to be on someone who's gotten right on top of you. And you can kind of work out exactly how much charge you need to hit those so that you get that as fast as possible because you know sometimes people are going to get on top of you and sometimes you need to be able to just fire very few shots yeah and that's like get someone down. partial partial charging is kind of important because you need to spotlings you really have to like time it because you only have a certain window to like fire your gun and like make use of lending your shots I, i'm like more of a charger main Sorry, fellas, <laughs> but uh, it's different it's where I from that in Yeah, where you have to like time it. Mm -hmm. It's, not, That's, like, it's kind of where you have to give yourself like a little bit of space distance from the person who's yeah. trying to rush at you. The class in general, like we mentioned, tends more towards the midline backline play style, towards anchoring. Um, and so, uh, one resource that I really do want to recommend for any, uh, especially backline splatling because uh, most of them are backliners, is uh, made by Devi, actually. Uh, she has a Google Drive folder full of images of the maps. Um, I'll put one of them on screen in editing just to, you know, <laughs> annoy myself as an editor later. Um, but uh, they, they show places on the map where Devi prefers to position. Um, it's designed for kind of a variety of ranges. It's not, you know, this is just for Hydras or this is just for the heavy or something like that. Um, you know, a variety of different backline positions and, uh, kind of what situations you would want to take those positions in, whether you're on offense, defense, or special circumstances that are more situational. And that has been a really valuable resource for me in trying to play backline weapons and for me to recommend to backline weapon players because uh, positioning is really important with this class, just like it is with chargers. If you don't have a spot that has big, wide open sight lines, then you having all this range doesn't do anything for you. And if you don't have a place where you can safely kind of tuck yourself away to get that charge before you start firing, then, you know, you're exposed during all that time you're charging, and you'd better have a good amount of distance between you and someone who's trying to rush you down, or else that's not going to go well for you. Um, so... Those are some general positioning tips that will apply for the vast majority of the splatlings here. You know, even the midline ones do need to be really careful about where they put themselves, uh, even if they can get themselves a little bit further in than, say, the heavy can. Um, it's not even generally where, like, I myself like the position. It's also, like, information gathered from other backlines that I've faced or just, like, what other, like, backlines have told me where they like to sit. It's information gathered from everywhere, so... Yeah. yeah. So definitely really like that resource. And if you're someone who's trying to get into one of these backline weapons that feels like you're just getting caught out in the wrong place or you're not able to see things, definitely give that a, a give that a look and see uh, if there's something you can learn from looking at why those positions are where they are. So uh, let's now get into weapon specific stuff. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about the sprinkler tech for the heavy splatling. Um, sprinkler, not generally you know uh a sub weapon that people are, are getting really excited about um but when you've got a sub weapon 
You know, you want to use it. <laughs> you don't want to just, like, give up all of that utility. And like Devi said, you know, there are definitely times where using that sprinkler can be helpful. So, like, in the heavies case, for example, if someone's, like, rushing towards you and you realize, like, you don't have the time window to be able to get this partial charge and then have it, like, actually, like, release from your weapon, that takes a certain period of time, which is why... Uh, it's considered like more slower just because you still have that little bit of extra time that you need to get the shots out yeah. so um especially with distance so that's that's where handy dandy little sprinkler happens and i usually just place it at my feet give myself a little space and then uh, a lot of times if they're like really tunnel visioning you they'll actually take a couple of hits from the sprinkler which means that you don't have to like get as much charge so still like aiming from a quarter to a half uh for one thing the sprinkler is actually kind of useful as a mobility tool uh, a lot of short range shooters will paint by like putting one little speck of paint at their feet and then swimming through it and then putting another little speck of paint and swimming through it well you can kind of do that with the splatling but you have to charge a little first and sometimes those shots are not going to come out it's not the most consistent thing um you need to really get the timing down and sometimes, you know, if you just really need that one little spot of paint, you just put a sprinkler down, swim through that. Um, and the sprinkler will also block shots for you. Uh, it blocks a few shots, which might give you the time that you need to, you know, stand behind it like it's a shield for you and get your charge ready while the shots hit the sprinkler instead of you. Um, it can also, like Devi mentioned, do a little bit of chip damage if someone does decide to stay in there and keep getting chipped by it. So... You don't typically want to be in the position where using the sprinkler is going to help you, but if you are in a pinch, if someone does get on top of you, which is probably going to happen at some point in time, that's one way to help keep them off you just long enough for you to fire up the, the spinny gun a little bit more. For you um, heavy players who also struggle at climbing walls, you have a sprinkler. It helps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Boink. There it is. <laughs> Look at all that paint. That I know, range. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... It's like a burst bomb, but worse. Um, I've called the sprinkler my bodyguard for a reason. It helps me get places and it protects me from shots. The yeah. sprinkler buddy is your bodyguard. Uh, yes, there you go. Buddy guard. <laughs> <laughs> like Little it. buddy spirit in sprinkler form. <laughs> and then uh, Wavebreaker is a pretty solid special for this to have. Um, I think it's a pretty good fit for this kind of a weapon. Um, you have the positioning further back where, you know... You're already positioning, planning on being a little bit vulnerable before you do any damage to someone. So having a deployable special, you know, one that you have to actually, like, put down out there, you're already going to be in a position where it's probably safe to do that if you're going to be using this main weapon. Um, but you're also a weapon that's not so much of a backline weapon that you can't, like, move in and try to follow up with this a little bit. Um, there are some weapons, like, if you go for, like, an E-leader... Sometimes I find that E-leaders don't actually get as much value out of the Wavebreaker because they have to be so far away to use their main weapon that the Wavebreaker's not even going to hit anything if they throw it from where they're at. Um, heavy's a little bit further forward. Um, there are some times where you can play the Heavy a little bit more like a midline weapon because of its range. And it's typically going to be in a position where it's going to follow up pretty well with that. So I find it to be a pretty good fit for the, the weapon. You guys agree? Yes, this is why it's, like, uh, commonly used on, like, tower or trying to secure um, certain places. Um, for example, like, I use it a lot on uh, Museum when going up to the enemy plot. Uh, the the Wavebreaker is also a wall, so if you're in a spot ready to push with your teammates, you can kind of put it in front of you if it's especially, like, an open area. It's like a little extra wall for you for a little bit that's also releasing damage. So it forces players to jump out of their ink and uh, either like rush you or kind of stay where they are. So it's, you just have all this extra protection method to get you secured so that your teammates can move up even farther. So it, it's such a handy tool. It, it's its own wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's another thing that blocks shots, if that's another thing that you happen yes. to need at that moment. <laughs> so... Yeah, lots of uh, ways to give yourself a little bit of extra security on this kit. Um, I'd definitely say it's pretty well-rounded. Um, so let's get going into a game here. Uh, I want to do tower. Let's, let's go for tower. 
We gotta, we gotta generate. Apparently, I was too nice on the charger one, Debbie, so we have to be meaner to Jim so we get clout from controversy. Uh, it's very important. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. too encouraging. As a, as a member of the Hydra criminals. I need to be I able to say that you guys right. are roasting me in the thumbnail, you know? Okay, all right. <laughs> Do you want me to draw a picture of my octopus, uh, Face palming and Debbie's crying. <laughs> just oh my just God. make I that into you guys' cringing. Discord profile pictures so that it's just happening anytime you talk. <laughs> it, was, it literally just uh, put me cringing so much of crying. Yeah. There's <laughs> a nice part about getting Wahoo World here. You don't have any of your hardest counters in this match, except for really the flush. I, guess I got way too far forward there. I was expecting yeah. my teammates to push around the right-hand side so that we could pinch that player, but they just got to shark me. Trust Something that no I do one. in that moment, I don't know if... Did you throw... I, I didn't see if you put a sprinkler in the middle, but I'd love to put a sprinkler at the back of tower if I'm going to push in a little bit with teammates. Uh, it just gives a little extra uh, cover fire, plus if you kind of back around to it, uh, guarantee you one of those short range weapons are also going to run into the sprinkler and again that applies the extra chip and helps you and the teammates around. Okay. I'd say the main weapons don't counter you as much, but the specials sure do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh goodness. Jerry! Oh, Jerry! Oh goodness! Jerry. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we take those. The spot beyond the grave. <laughs> the very that was uh, uh, that optimal play. Uh, uh, I I will have nobody say anything bad about. No, no, that was a terrible idea. Uh. Look, Stay on top until you get the control of that with just any kind of little bit of ink. Back them up a bit and then drop down. Uh, you know, but that was the optimal play. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it works, that means it's good. Remember that, kids. <laughs> <laughs> the brush trying to go for bumper brushes? Uh... I, I don't think they knew I was there at all. I think I just sharked they... them there. Uh... Let's just drop that down and uh, help the team a little no, bit. Jerry, yeah, I was worried there was... It's your tower wall, you, remember? You put it on the tower, you could have put it on the, um, the flat. Whenever you think someone's behind you, like you, if you have that gut feeling someone's behind you, or if you just have like too many in front of you, stick the stick the wave breaker. It's it's actually even better just to put it on your left hand side. That way you can just keep prioritizing the right hand pe side peak off the tower, uh, and you don't have to worry about the left side. Or just put it behind you, play in front. Um, but a lot of times, stick it on the left hand side so you can prioritize the right hand side but it moves with the tower, so you get to cover more range with the waves. Yeah, it's, you could get a, some cheeky things because uh, <laughs> they don't expect the wave breaker to move. <laughs> and yeah. like, uh, uh oh. It's so silly on moving things. <laughs> yeah. Good placement, Jerry. I clap for you. Good wave breaker placement there. Thank you. Oh, that killed someone who I did not see. see? You can get some <laughs> silly things done. Uh -oh. Get the get the headshot on the crab. We could do it. <laughs> just kidding. That's risky. If if anything, you could have just used tower wall to protect you instead of running all the way back and then having to go back forward. Yeah, it, I figured yeah, it was, it was very conservative was to try and go up there, but better safe than sorry. I figured. I'd rather be too conservative on this weapon than just be going in and feeding. True. I mean, uh, I except that one time, because is... that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The other thing is with playing this is just, you know, remembering where your teammates are, because in that point in time, you had uh, two others beside you ready to help get rid of the crab with you. Um, so it's just also keeping an eye on where they're at. That doesn't reach. Crab. There's, yeah, there's another one. <laughs> I wonder if they have like special charge. Oh, there's like so many, so many crabs. I didn't catch it from the opening that thing. It was, uh, no, they don't. No, they Wait, don't. thermal link on what? There was something with thermal link. Interesting. But otherwise, uh, the rest are trying to be very stealthy. <laughs> I was trying to squid roll, and I just never gave myself enough ink to do it. That's 
something I struggle with a lot is squid rolling with the splat legs. Um, yeah. Just because oh, it's, it's slower to move and swim around, right? You need the extra swim speed to trigger um, the squid roll, so that's why kind of uh, people uh -oh. like to run subs of IA. There's a brush under you. It's brush somewhere. Along with helping jump back here soon. But... Nice, that's three down. Further forward here. See if I can get a I, oh, I, play, me. Um, I play <laughs> Splat Links like a crazy person. Uh, if I see that no one on the other team can outrange me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little cheeky I, things. Yep. Uh, I'd be like, like come, on, come on, come on, me. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure me. people who, who see what I do, I literally tell people to come dance with me. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> That one was a little bit annoying because I did ouch. So like people knew that there was someone in range of mid, but nobody came back. So there was just nobody on the tower and <laughs> we lost the tower. Solo! That, that's that's a lot of the struggles that we have as backlines in mm -hmm. these solo games, especially tower, because you are automatically labeled as tower rider. Uh, even if you're in an installed area, people just assume that you're gonna ride tower. But then it's funny because some games it's that where it's just like, okay, the last couple games, everyone assumed I have to ride tower. So now when you have the advantage to push forward, it's like, okay, I'll ride tower. All of a sudden you have a front line and a support riding tower, and then you have nobody else leading the way for the entire game. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. tower is yours. Uh -huh. <laughs> Or you have situations where they'll take tower for the first part of the game, and then you're like, up in a again up in that front spot, and then it's just like, okay, well they've been taking the tower the whole game, so I'm fine to go here. All of a sudden they uh, move up towards you, and then assume that you're going to take tower while everybody else is also actually assuming their roles, and it's like, uh, but I'm already here. <laughs> yep. Yep. So. Yep. Too real. <laughs> We'll move on to uh, the, the Hydra Splatling, which is just the heavy Splatling, but yes. big. Um, this is this is Debbie's one true love. Um, <laughs> the, this is Hugo, everybody. Yes. Uh, Hi, Hugo. So we'll immediately notice that the charge time is much, much slower uh, to get full charge here. But for a quick comparison of the range, um, I'm not going to hit the back wall from here, am I? Okay, good. I'm not hitting the back we're wall. Close. I, I was like, it's gonna. I, I was like, I think you're gonna end up right in front of it, but I don't think it's gonna reach the wall, <laughs> just because it's gonna it's gonna drop right with the shots. Mm -hmm. So. So. So yeah. I, very I know this significant one has a difference. difference there. About a full line's worth of mm -hmm. extra range that you get off of the Hydra. Um, and the Hydra is just one of the the highest DPS weapons in the entire game. Um, extremely fast fire rate, has that charge for a very long time. If you are on a Hydra sightline and you are not, like, an E-leader with charge that you're currently releasing, you are probably just already dead. Um, oh boy, it's, oh boy. it's a very, um, polarized weapon. Because once it gets its charge, it is really, really powerful and can just... Straight up, like, if, if there is a weapon in the game that I trust to win a 1v3, like, consistently, it is a Hydra who has got position on three players who don't know where it's at. Um, like, I trust yeah. that a lot more than I even trust, like, a Carbon Deco getting in there. Um, th this is just way too easy to mow down, like, an entire team off of one charge. Um, that was five dummies, I think I just splatted off of one charge. Um... So if you're in a if you're in the spot, you could get pretty much like six or seven. So <laughs> yeah, um, really really powerful weapon when it has the charge, and that's a huge asterisk because it is also a heavyweight weapon. So it is one of the slowest weapons in the game. Um, it takes a really long time to get that charge, and so the kind of lag time between when it's capable of firing and when it's just like hopping up out of the ink and stuff when it's charging up um that lag time is definitely not great for it and we can see that uh like the heavy the 
early shots, they're not going super far. That's like, that's getting outranged by a 96, if I remember correctly, uh, those early shots right there. Mm -hmm. So you do need a pretty significant amount of charge before you're getting that max range. There's a pretty good kind of indicator of how it scales up over time. Um, so for this weapon to be in a powerful position, you know, it needs to have a really good open sight line, which that's only one or two spots on the map. And it needs to be able to get there and not be harassed by something like bombs. Uh, bombs are one of the best counters to a Hydra because they force it to move. And remember, when you're forced to move with most Splatlings, that means you lose the charge and you have to recharge again once you get back up from the ink. Um, so if you really just pelt this with sub weapons or you know torpedoes like uh, auto bombs um, just lethal bombs anything that's going to do damage to it that it needs to move away from uh, a lot of specials get thrown at hydras it tends to really limit this weapon's ability to have an impact because it's going to take you know a second or two to move and then another couple of seconds to get back into position where it wants to be and then another couple of seconds to get charge again and like that's half a respawn time sometimes, you know? It can take a really long time for this weapon to be able to get back into the game after it's been pushed out by stuff like that. Um, so it's really powerful when it gets to do things, but that makes it all the more important to make it not do things. And because it's so powerful when it has the charge, um, the developers have given it all of these um, really major nerfs to balance the fact that it has this crazy fire rate, this crazy DPS at this crazy range. You mentioned torpedoes. The uh, thing is that when torpedoes are against splatlings, they aren't as effective as they are against chargers just because, you know, we have more than one shot. So mm -hmm. as long as, like, if you're just going to spam torpedoes, like, yes, you're going to take the aim away and, like, you know, you're going to let the splatling release the charge. But it could, it could also be a bad thing for your team, because if you make the Splatling release the charge, as soon as they finish the torpedo, they're going after the next target. So it could end up actually splatting your team because you're making them, you know, release early and then it's going to displace the team. So um, torpedoes aren't as effective, like, unless if their entire aim is taken away so they can't shoot down the torpedo. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like... It's extra pressure to add to something. It's like, you're not going to get much out of just launching super chumps at a, at a Hydra, but launching super chumps and then putting forward pressure on them, that's something which will, you know, force them to make a decision what they're going to shoot at here. Mm -hmm. um, it still kind of plays out the same way, the torpedoes and super chumps. Because mm -hmm. it so. can still make them release the charge and they just break right through it. And if you're swimming through it, you're going right through the charge. <laughs> So one really nice thing that this weapon has going for it is its kit. Um, I would argue that this is the best kit that the Hydra Splatling has had. Um, I don't remember exactly what it had in Splatoon 1. Um, so maybe I'm off on that. Someone told but... me it had Kraken in Splatoon 1 on one mm -hmm. of them, I think. Okay, maybe maybe it was better there. Um, I think an S one of the S1 Hydras tops the S2 and 3 kits, but I can't remember which one because I never played S1, so I don't know that experience. Gotcha. Um, well, but the Splatoon 3 one, I would say, is definitely better than all of the Splatoon 2 ones because um, I think it takes the best elements of, of each. Um, the auto bomb is great because it lets you spot sharks and it makes it so that like you can just safely walk forward because you know whether there's someone there or not. Um, because moving up is always a challenging thing for an anchor weapon. You need to know like when it is that you can go forward and take those more powerful positions that give you better sight lines. Um, and you typically need to do those pretty quick, but if you don't know that it's safe to be there, the uh, auto bomb can be a great way to check. And then when you do get threatened, uh, being able to pop Booyah Bomb and just get a whole bunch of extra HP and have a big get off me bomb that you can throw at someone. Um, that is a really valuable kind of defensive panic special sort of idea. Um, plus, since you're probably going to be playing further back and more likely to be playing from high ground, 
it's a really good special for you to have because it lets you set up fights for your teammates. Um, and since, look at you know how much I can see from here. If your teammates are down here, that limits what all they can see of the battlefield around them. Um, Hydras are going to be like a really good sort of general. Um, they can put a Booyah Bomb down in a place that isolates opponents into their teammates, and they can see those situations better because they're playing from so far back on the map. If you've got a teammate who is unaware that somebody's there, you can just throw an auto bomb over there, and then the auto bomb will give them away. And so that's another way that you can kind of navigate this in a solo queue environment. Sorry, Apple, you were saying? And another thing with playing so far back is you definitely have to lead your shots, I think, yes. a little more than you would normally uh, do. And this is especially true with Hydra and Ballpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, more so Ballpoint, because uh, the velocity is uh, sh sh slower than Hydra's, if I remember correctly, so mm -hmm. you do have to lead your shots quite a bit if you're shooting at someone from far green. You can see some of those are trailing behind the target as I'm aiming at Cute. it, so definitely an, an important thing to, to be learning with any kind of long-range weapon. Because um, the short-range weapons, the shots are going to go where you aim them, and people don't have time to move away. Uh, but with the amount of travel time that these projectiles are going to have from this range, you can see, like, I'm just going to try and keep the, the reticle directly on the target while I'm firing this. You'll find you can it see that that's trailing faces. pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. So, you do have to be a little bit proactive with where you're aiming. Um, as with any kind of, especially like shooter style weapon, but really anything, if you're going to be missing shots, you want to aim, uh, err on the side of aiming in front of them so that you're stopping them and they get stuck um, rather than just letting them keep swimming in whatever they had ready to swim in before. Um, let's go and try or we'll, we'll go back and forth between Tower and Rainmaker. I, I would generally say um, you're one of the better candidates on the team for picking up the Rainmaker if you're the Hydra player. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, you know, I might in some occasions, if there's like a support who's willing to do it, let the support pick it up just so that I can show off the main weapon more because this is not a, a Rainmaker demo per se. Um, mm -hmm. But the timing of when you pick up the Rainmaker should be something that you kind of understand. Um, you want to be really aware of when you have advantages and when you've got space clear in front of you so that you know to pick it up. Um, and it's, it's nice because the Rainmaker is going to function a lot like an anchor weapon, um, just like what you've been playing this whole time. So you're not going to be playing such a vastly different play style. It is shorter range and the worst fire rate and, you know, a lot of different things that are not going to work the same way as the Hydra, but at least like the positioning, the philosophy of my teammates go in first and then I hold ground that they take, um, that's still going to be there. So, um, I, I literally played two of the, with two of these people in open earlier on the nice. other team. Um, we're going to try and go and at least get a bomb on the shield early on. Uh, they ended up getting this, but let's see if we can use the range here. Um, since there's no E-leader in play, literally the E-leader being the only other weapon that's going to contest here, um, we kind of just get to shoot at whatever we want to from this position. Um, it's, until they, uh, have until they bombard me <laughs> with something, like, they're not mm. going to really move me. You should also try to use fall off because mm -hmm. it could fall off at is least huge paint, on this map. Yeah, it could at least paint like where they are if you don't you don't get a cheeky splat. So I'm gonna throw that there. Try and get up here and make sure that this area is secure. The teammates feel more comfortable moving in. I'm gonna pop this and just put it behind them. Just see if I can force them forward into my team. Got one. There we go. Now, hopefully the chicken is gonna keep you safe. We're gonna shred this real quick. I'm gonna nag you to check the map more. Okay. I, I'm also sitting here like with, in this situation, yes, because one could always be looking under the corner. Also in that situation with the bubble underneath, 
Um, the teammate, like, the that team can't really, like, do anything unless if they go back around and come up the ramp, even if they jump to the bubble. So if anything, just paint forward towards mid instead of wasting your charge to bubble because it takes longer to recharge again and then you have to defend ramp right afterwards. So it's kind of like a distraction. You really have to know what target you want to focus on Ow! with your charge just because it takes longer um, to, like, charge up. So in that case, like, if it was clams, they have a rail there, so yeah, it would be okay to shred the bubble. Um, but for Rainmaker, we can just keep looking forward because the bubble's not going to really do much down there to impact you. Um, yes, they might get jumps in, but uh, keeping control of mid there is more important with your teammates. Okay. One of your teammates actually almost wanted to go for the Rainmaker there. In some cases, if you find another one is trying to pop it with you, they might actually take it because it looked like your teammate did want to. And on this map, uh, you can actually get more control to help your frontline secure the ramp because you have more range looking up. Because considering your team comp, the only one that has the extra kind of range is kind of the, the wiper shot sideways and I guess the T-Tech with whatever it can do. But look at how much control you have over this ramp. An installed Hydra here is really hard to take down. <laughs> That unfortunately landed on top of the big bubbler. Mm -hmm. I'm going to back away here. I think it can probably hold from here. Or at least a little bit. Not anymore. Ooh, hello. Until they start really putting bombs at you on that side, the side of the ramp actually protects you more than you think. Like, the only thing to really worry, of, worry about is if, like, you know, the shots get really close. Um, or just toss bombs, but if they don't, you can just kind of keep hopping, and even though it, like, makes your RNG worse, it still spaces them backwards from over that, uh, that, uh, left-hand side, because I do, uh, aggressive criminal maneuvers on that side a lot on this map. <laughs> Alright, we've got a Kraken moving in. Nice. Or not. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> I'm just seeing an opportunity to get a push started here, move it mm, very far yeah, over. Definitely a good time to take it, especially with your wiper and your roller being beside you. I like how there's one on each side there, because they, they saw the they saw someone drop down to the right, so they were able to capitalize on that. So. Oh. Unfortunate that we weren't able to get anything there, but it's fine because we side. have plenty of time to get back on defense before we're in any kind of danger here. I might even be able to take this position. Mm -hmm. oh, and considering the close. and considering they just used the Inkazuka, the only other special that's really going to displace you was the tri strike. So you could have actually taken the main position up on the snipe there, just to keep painting around the middle. Then you're not in such a tight space, which is where you just yeah. Were. I definitely cornered myself there, and I realized it a little bit too late. Okay, we stopped it in time. Not even not even worried. No concerns. <laughs> Secretly sweat drips down the side of the... Uh, <laughs> and, and nerves. Oh man, You're I do not like that uh... they took it up to the ledge there. Pick it up, pick it oh, up, pick boy. it up, pick it up. Okay, whew. <laughs> we really needed to pick that up to... right there. <laughs> I thought they were going to go do There was a splat bomb right in front of your player, and just the the literal 0.5 of a second gap from before the splat bomb exploded and your teammate picking it up was... Oh. <laughs> Two and five. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we take those. You're booyahing. It's a win. First win of the day. You got your freshness. We even got freshness. There you See? go, Jerry. It's a super win. Hugo has I leveled got a up for Jerry today. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, yeah, where's the gold sticker, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Never enough, Jerry. <laughs> we're going to go for uh, what I would consider the last My of the baby. backline splatlings here, which is the ballpoint. Um, so... The Hydra is relatively simple to explain because it's just the heavy but big. Uh, but the ballpoint is a little bit more complicated because uh, the ballpoint has multiple different firing modes and the way that you manipulate your charge changes what kind of range you get and what kind of shots you get. So from short range, you get these really fast 
widespread short range shots. So they look kind of like this. And you can see right at the end, one of those shots jumped way further out in front. Um, if you, you know, get your, your kind of max charge, you get the first about half charge out of the way, you can get these really, really long range, incredibly accurate shots, which are about Hydra range. I believe they're a little bit less right now. Um, but those are really, really powerful. And unlike with other splatlings, um, you can kind of just refresh your charge in the middle of it to be able to keep those shots like so. So you can see I'm just keeping out that stream of really long range shots that are really accurate. And this is super dangerous because this splatling doesn't have anywhere near as much downtime. Um, until it runs out of ink, it can just keep that steady stream of shots going. Um, whereas the other splatlings are kind of going to kind of have to go back up to full charge, and there's going to be a lot more time that they're not firing. The ballpoint just gets to kind of do this for however long it wants to, and it's going to be able to you know walk around while it's charging like that, and it's very mobile, and it's going to be able to lay down this amount of fire for a pretty long time. So where the Hydra is, you know, going to get maybe, you know, six or seven players off a single charge, and you're probably not getting quite exactly as much off of the long-range shots from this weapon, you are, however, able to refresh that charge faster, and so it's more of a sustained DPS kind of splatling than, like, a burst damage kind of splatling. Uh, you're going to be able to just stay out there and continue to control space, and that's a really kind of powerful ability to have with a weapon that's got this much range and this good of a fire rate. Well, so, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong for this one. The other kind of thing about like holding the sniper mode of the ballpoint is that what is it? If you like, you know how you're you're recharging in the middle, right? If mm -hmm. you end up recharging to a full charge, I think it reverts back to the short range mode, doesn't it? Right. Uh, uh, so, yeah. so it's something to be careful of whenever we're trying to continue it. We can't actually full charge it. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to go back to starting short range shots again. And I know that's a common mistake that a lot of first time ballpoint users make. Right. So like here, I charged all the way back to full. And you can see my reticle move when it r changes modes. Also on the back of the... This is a cool detail I love that they added uh, on the back of the ballpoint. It... See it your uh, short, yeah, it glows, and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. I wish the kit wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does have, like, I mean, at least Fizzy Bob is pretty good. Uh, but mm -hmm. the ink jet yeah. is, is a is a is a. Hey, you want to play Duck Hunt? Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> as 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 Apple said, uh, the kit is definitely what's holding this weapon back, not the main weapon. Um, if this main weapon had the kits of like one of the other two splatlings i have a feeling it would just kind of usurp their spot um because this this main weapon is really versatile very mobile has a lot of really good dps and can also just get set up and be an absolute nuisance with the main weapon but inkjet is not a great backline special um inkjet is something that you get the most value from if you use it from underneath a ledge like this because you can delete someone on your way up. Um, the ballpoint doesn't need that because it doesn't want to be underneath ledges like that. It wants to be really far back from ledges like that so it can hit up over the top of them and use its max range to hit those players. Uh, it wants to be like back here, not underneath that ledge. By the time the, the shot, the inkjet shot gets from here to that player, they literally have time to react and dodge it. It's a very slow projectile. So, there's just not a lot of synergy with a longer ranged weapon and that slow moving projectile that is best used to like one shot someone from close range before setting up at high ground to rain down on people. Um, so the opportunities to use it are fewer than you would get on other weapons. Um, fizzy bomb, while, you know, nobody's complaining about having a fizzy bomb, the thing about the fizzy bomb for the ballpoint is that Anytime you're spending charging up the fizzy is time that you're not spending charging up your ballpoint. 
And this is a pretty long amount of time that you have before you can get started with firing. And while you're firing, if you decide to throw a fizzy bomb from here, first of all, you're not likely to have as much uh, ink in the tank to do it. But if you decide to start throwing a fizzy, you're going to lose your charge to do that. Since it is a sub-weapon that has a lot of time that it takes before you throw one, it doesn't mesh super well with the main weapon. Um, it's not bad to have, because again, Fizzy Bomb is just one of the better sub-weapons in the game. But it's definitely not the best user of Fizzy Bomb by any means. Um, it's not a weapon that's going to rely heavily on damage combos, on chip damage. Like, if you're shooting someone with a Splatling, you expect they're going to go down pretty soon. Um, it's a very high DPS weapon. They don't have a lot of time to leave before those shots splat them. So you're not as worried about needing that extra little bit of chip as you are with something like a sloshing machine with the incredibly slow fire rate. Um, so I'm not saying that like it's a bad sub-weapon for it, but it's also one that doesn't synergize as well as it synergizes with some of the other weapons in the game. So the kit is definitely what uh, lets the ball point down here. And even then, we are still seeing a good amount of ball point. Um, for example, just recently in... Um, the Squid Junction that I commentated with Chara, um, a team comp called New Meta was using a lot of ballpoint to control greats on Manta. They'd have the ballpoint just standing up there, you know, constantly raining down with their charge. And then once the area was clear, they'd have a inkjet ready to go to get up over the top of the wall of Bunker to be able to control that really well. And that worked super well for them. Um, so, like, they're definitely... Anytime that you can find a place where it makes sense to put a ballpoint and also have an inkjet, it's definitely something to consider. You know, it's it's definitely not a weapon that a competitive player is going to sleep on here. It is something that is seeing play at the highest level. Um, but it's going to be a little bit situational just because of that kit. You need to figure out a way to get value out of the inkjet, because otherwise you're not getting that much more out of the ballpoint than you are, say, the heavy, that you wouldn't prefer something like a wavebreaker uh, over a special that really doesn't synergize well with the kit. Ballpoint fall off is pretty nasty because there's no RNG on the mm, yes. mode, so you could get some pretty pretty funny things off. Mm -hmm. Uh if you if you're really familiar with like the range and things, you you could you could do be a little silly. <laughs> That's another thing why it's uh, it's pretty solid on Manta too because splatlings, mm -hmm. uh, especially the ranged ones, a lot of uh, other backlines just like to take on the bunker. There's that little, like, the top of the wall you can stand on. If you have a splatling on the great right side peak it, you can get fall-off shots, and because it's so accurate, you just either move forward or backwards, and it, as long as you line up with that wall, most likely you're gonna get the fall-off splat, so it is it's very punishable on Manta. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm not good at that, and you're probably not gonna be seeing that utility very much, but know that it is, you know, if you get used to this weapon, if you main this weapon, figuring out how to hit these kinds of shots is definitely not outside of the realm of possibility. Um, it's something that takes a little bit of practice, but if you're going to be spending your entire time with the game playing these weapons, then learn it. <laughs> definitely yeah. worth being able to find angles like that when you can. Take a few minutes to go into recon and see, like, hmm, I wonder if I can actually shoot over this. Like, a lot of backlines actually look to see the arc shot distance on like hagglefish over the left and right walls so mm -hmm. a lot of people calculate that because that's another big punishable one with fall off is the two walls on hagglefish <laughs> yeah or if you have like a, a friend who's willing to help you with the oh yeah living that out that is also a good idea it's like hey you mind uh you might just stand in here for a few moments. Oh yeah, sure, what do you need me to do? And then just con. Oh, I missed. Uh, oh, I missed. Oh, I got you. <laughs> now let's do it again. Let's do it again. Thanks, friends. Let's do it again. It's just like, am I really just the, the, the training dummy for this? Yes, now stay. So we're going to start from top right over here. And just try to get in position to watch over... This area right here. We've got a heavy that we're fighting against, and there's also a jet squelcher we'll have to watch out for the range of. Um, Stamper can potentially be dangerous to us. Ah, oh, I thought I could get them before they got the shots on. Unfortunate. 
Two for two trade. Uh, oh, shoot, our player's probably going to jump now. Yep. Okay. So I probably don't want to be contesting first checkpoint right now. With it still being early and there was nobody underneath Stipe, you definitely could have taken it and at least painted underneath and stalled it because the Zipcaster was, would have chased you, yes, but you had a lot of room to, like, back up and go around. So we could have been an area still, like, painting away and, like, your sniper mode could have been enabled already. Um, and even when the uh, Zipcaster's out, there is a high chance that when you're already on snipe, you can just kind of sidestep and basically catch the Zipcaster when it's jumping over that block. And as they're in, like, the, the squid surge for the jump animation, you can just spot them. Uh, left side peeking, that is really hard. You should probably just try to take a different angle, but... That or yeah. that's where your sub will actually come in handy because they're directly below you. So if you want to hit it like directly below, you either gotta, again, calculate a short range arc shot or just Check a fizzy just below you and, and paint it around, or just outright reposition. I might redo this one because this is a little ridiculous. I, I do recognize uh, the one shot on the other team too. That is a that is a uh, that is a comp it's a, player. That's a game I run into all the time. The other thing with the bulb one is you really have to be dead on your aim in long range mode because uh, the other spot lines are some deviation so if you're not exactly dead on eh, there's a little leeway but for mm -hmm. ballpoint you gotta hit your shots otherwise you're you're just kind of sad welcome to extended splash <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> it still does uh, a bit. Oh, well. just gotta get the hydra sticker okay <laughs> very important